Yo, what's up guys? Rob Shugraff here with Three Sword Fitness. I'm going to do a quick exercise demonstration first just to show you what we're talking about and then I'll get down to the, the nitty gritty, okay? Here we go. See me? So, so this is like my, um, I don't know, poor man's crossover, a uh, high crossover specifically, pulley crossover for like cable flies is what I was doing there. Um, I got this idea and I will break it down I will try to talk about every specific thing because I know when I make these videos, I always forget to talk about stuff. I'm going to do my best. In fact, I'll just say it right now. In the description, I'm going to put a link and talk about all the specifics of what I use to make this if you want to do it at home. That being said, let's, let's, uh, let's talk, let me talk about the inspiration real quick. It actually came from, uh, it actually came from one of you. <laughs> it came from a, uh, a YouTube uh, viewer name of this channel named, uh, I believe his name is Anima or Naima or something like that. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. But he asked, he said... I was doing a Rogue Matador dip bar review a long time ago, several years ago, at least a couple of years ago. This Rogue Matador, if you haven't seen it, it attaches to like, in this case it's a, it's a Rogue R4 and Infinity, uh, Infinity holes, Infinity attachments. And it just attaches like this, right? You see that? So you can do dips, pop a pen through there. What he said was, do you think I could take two of these, so go and buy another matador, and I think this is what he was saying, mount it somehow to the side like this, or possibly he was saying like this, real high, and then hang two pulleys down to make a crossover. <laughs> My initial thought was that seems like a real waste of a, an extra matador, but then I got to thinking for in about 30 seconds, I'm like, that's a pretty, like, he's on to something there. So, I was messing around, and what I did was took a barbell, just a regular old barbell. Because the thing is, if you have these pulleys, um, I'll talk about the pulleys here in a second, but if you have these pulleys, um, you know, you can hang it from your pull-up bar, but if you're trying to do flies, you can sort of do it, but there's just not enough space. It's hard to get a full range of motion. And these, the place just, they, they pop into this right now as it is a little bit, but even more so, it's just harder to manage. It's just, it's just more difficult. It's not quite the same. So I was thinking, how can I get the spacing out further to get a big full range of motion? So I think a barbell, this is, uh, this is, I think, a road beater bar. I don't even think I make it anymore. I think they're echo bars now. But anyway, let's take a uh, barbell. It could be any barbell. Ran over the top of the rack. And right now, it's not, nothing's holding, nothing's holding it on. Um, it's, it's just freestanding up at the top of the post here. Um, the, really, the only thing that keeps it on is the tension from when I'm working. Like, if I put one of these right now, it's going to slide a little bit. I don't know if you saw that. It did. It slid, as you kind of expect it to. But if you reach and grab the other one, it comes back and it stops right on the top of the post here. So it's not really going anywhere. Um, and then what I did is I took, and again, I promise I'll talk about the pulleys and the cables, but I took a, uh, a, a, a pulley system with a cable and I ran a strap around, usually the strap, if you buy these online, usually it comes with a strap. It attaches to the swivel block. And I just ran that out, uh, ran it, just looped it over the barbell sleeve, and then I put a collar in front of it just so it doesn't slide inward. I'm not too worried about it sliding outward because, again, that tension is going to make it pull in. But I didn't want it to slide in and kind of screw up my range of motion, so I just put a, a barbell collar. Um, this is an Iron Lab barbell collar, it could be anything. Uh, 
uh, right, right in place there, just kind of stop the strap from moving. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about this whole setup here. Um, so we'll talk about this in a second. What I have here is a strap. Talk about the handle in a second too. The strap that I made, well actually I didn't make it, I commissioned a friend of mine, Cass, shout out to my boy Cass. Commissioned my friend Cass, who's like 9,000 times more handy than I am, he could pump these things out pretty quickly, to make 25 of these quarter inch, well technically they're 3 16 inch steel cables with a nylon coating, making them a total of a quarter inch um, circumference or diameter. Just look up quarter, uh, 3 16 vinyl coating, it'll be a quarter inch. Okay, if you want to make your own. Um, if you have like spud, spud econo pulley, which I do have, um, I just kind of want to demo it with this because uh, I'm missing one of them right now. Uh, if you have a spud econo pulley, same dimensions. These are the same dimensions as those. Um, it just happens to be uh, silver and clear instead of black. So then I took, uh, oh, and by the way, about these, I do want to kind of plug myself here because the reason I had to make me 25 of these is because I want to start selling them. I've been talking about doing that for a long time. And I opened an Amazon store and the uh, as soon as COVID hit, Amazon discontinued their um, FBA program. I won't get into details about it. Basically what it means is I send a bunch of these to Amazon, I stick a UPC code on it, and then they sell them for me and they keep a pretty sizable chunk of the profits, but they handle all the shipping and all that stuff for me. Well, when COVID hit, they shut that program down temporarily. So I, I'm just kind of sitting on a bunch of inventory right now. But anyways, as soon as that happens, I will, uh, I'll reopen the store. But anyways, what I did was I got a swaging tool. This is a feller or felure or whatever you call it. And uh, you use my swaging tool to, to crimp this down. And then I like to use thimbles on the inside of mine because it just kind of protects the integrity of this is the one exposed part of the steel. This protects the integrity of that. So I just, thimbles are pretty inexpensive. If you're making these yourself, just pop them in there and you get just a little extra integrity in there. Um, I decided to opt for, kind of break the bank a little bit on uh, three inch, uh, quarter inch. So three inches is referring to the, um, Somebody out there who in like the rigging community is going to kill me for this, but the little uh, wheel on the inside there, three inch there, and this is a block division. I bought these off of eRigging.com. They happen to be the same company that Spud uses, and I use I got the one with the removable pin, so that way you're not fixed when you terminate the ends of this. You can you can take this out and switch it and use it for different things if you want to. I got the three inch because I was advised that the, the more narrow the, uh, the action is on here the, of, the, of the, the piece in the middle, um, the, 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 the more stress that puts on the pulley itself. So in order to extend the life of your cable, get a fatter, get, you know, get the three inch for instance, which is what I did, cost just a little bit more money, a few bucks, and you're going to have a little more life in your cable, a little smoother action probably in the long run. So, quarter inch swivel block. I got it with this, the swivel action, this eye in the top. Does not come with the strap. The strap, this is actually just happens, to be, I've had these, I've talked about these straps a million times. These straps, Spud calls them an endless loop. This, is, this, this actually is not a Spud um, strap, but they work the same Way. I think spuds are probably just a little nicer. They're $5 on the site. I'll link to them on the spud site. Fortunately, I don't get any commissions for that, but you know, hopefully it helps you out. Um, it's just a, an endless, call them an endless loop. Okay. Just a fastened nylon stitched real well. These hold hundreds and hundreds of pounds and you can loop them around anything. Five bucks on the spud. If you want this one, I think this came with like, like a resistance band kit I bought 
one time, I got a couple of these. So whatever you can find that's a version of this. Um, you could run that through the loop, and then again, that part goes over the barbell sleeve, okay? Then, so hopefully that makes sense with the, with the dimensions of this and everything. Like I said, 3 16ths, vinyl coated, making it a total of one quarter inch. I added the thimbles. You have to have a swaging tool if you want to make this, unless you want to have it machined or something. So, you know, I can't really help you with that, but I use Tyler, Tyler tools, I believe is my uh, swager, my bowling. Well, a couple of my, I spent too much money on this project. But anyways, um, couple carabiners, you'll need, you'll need four carabiners total. Two for, two to clip the, the handles. This is a spud, uh, spud handle. I think, I reviewed these before. Don't remember how much they cost. Somewhere in the ballpark of 30 bucks. Very, very nice. This is like steel in the middle here. So you can't crush these things like I can with my like, cheapo resistance band ones. Nice um, coating here. You could, I did a video on that round sling last week. You could, you could probably work that into this if you wanted to, if you're kind of on a, on, a, on a budget and you had them lying around. But this is, I love this handle. This handle works great. So one carabiner, or I guess two carabiners for the handles, two carabiners for the loading pin. Now the loading pin, I've done a full video on the loading pin, so I won't spend too much time on it. But what I use is these, I think they're JCHL is the brand, but like other companies like Rhino and Cartman make them too. These are uh, soft loop motorcycle tie down straps and they're very cheap and they're extremely durable and versatile. Um, I bought a four pack of them. Bought a four pack of them for like, it's like eight bucks or 10 bucks or something. And what I do is I just run this through here. If you want to watch the details, watch that loading pin video, I'll link to it. Run this through here on the, with a two and a half pound plate. That kind of acts as my anchor on the bottom, and then I just slide the weights on top of that. Okay. Um, the reason I want to use two of these and not just a loading pin, because I have other loading pins, but I don't have two of other loading pins, and that's going to kind of screw up. You know, like one of my loading pins, for instance. Um, one of my loading pins is a. Uh, uh, I can't find it. <laughs> I'll just talk about it. It's like a. For doing like a swing post, a loading pin for doing like heavy swings, you can load plates on that Black Widow makes. Sorenex makes them too. They're, they're really cool. If you, that's another, I'll link to that video too. But, anyways, that's a loading pin I use. And I also have a spud loading pin. Well, they weigh different amounts and they're different lengths. So, you get all sorts of screwy when you're trying to be symmetrical with your, with your fly. So, that's why I just use two of these. They're cheaper anyway, much, much, much cheaper. Um, so, just go for that. Uh, somebody just pulled up. I have no idea who it is. Hmm. Huh. Hopefully, if you guys don't witness murder right now, it'll be theirs. <laughs> um, so, that's really about it. Now, you might be asking, well, that's great. You can do the high pulley. What about the low pulley? I haven't done that yet. Uh, what I, I'm almost positive I can do is basically the same thing. I'll just need four cables, and I run one from the top. Put the barbell down at the very bottom part, underneath the bottom post. So run one cable down here, the, the, the barbell still up top, the weight hangs from here, okay? So it's going like this, up, weight's here on the back end of the power rack. It's going to connect down with like a carabiner. That runs down underneath, I don't know, another barbell, i got to figure this out. But I'm pretty sure that when I combine those things, I'll be able to have this lower action. It's just going to take a little more equipment and a little more TLC. But if I figure that out, if I, if I shoot for that, I'll be sure to let you know. So guys, uh, give this a shot. Let me know if you have questions. Like I said, you could do this with your spot equipment or whatever other pulley kind of crap you have lying around. Or you could make your own. Or you could buy them from me when I freaking open my store, whenever that will be when this COVID stuff stops and Amazon gets their FBA program back. Alright guys, if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel, and please have a wonderful day.